Oh, jeez, that's, that's a long video. But nonetheless, Elden Ring has a lot of dungeons, 52 of them to be precise. And it's no surprise that in your playthroughs, you might have missed a few. Might be because they're hidden away, they didn't have any good rewards for you, or you just think they're boring, which is fair enough, because most of them are absolute jokes. But nonetheless, I'm here today to go through and review all 52 dungeons to see if they're worth your time and maybe also for you to learn about a new location or two but before we get into that there are three things i want to say firstly when i say dungeon i really mean like the hidden caves and such on the maps i'm not including the larger underground areas or legacy dungeons like sophia well or stormville castle because i feel like these are more like entire new maps rather than like quick little dungeons secondly in ranking the dungeons i'm going to try not to factor in the difficulty of the dungeons because the difficulty is purely going to be subjective you could be coming here as a mage and you're gonna have a completely different experience to someone playing like as a warrior for example and thirdly for the rankings i'm going to be ranking each of these out of 10 but i feel it's important to tell you what i mean when i say ranking out of 10 because everyone ranks 10 out of different for me i treat out of 10s like the strongly disagree to the strongly agree type of answer sheet, meaning a five out of 10 is a completely neutral opinion, six out of 10 is a slight like for it, a three out of 10 is a dislike for it, etc. All right, now we've got that cleared up, let's get into it. The Stormfoot Catacombs are located right here in Limgrave. This tends to be a lot of people's first dungeon, and for that, it's a pretty good one. A lot of ambushes here, a lot of traps, so it teaches that the slow and cautious approach is often the best one in these games. I have a little sneaky fucking feeling that every dungeon later on, I'm gonna have a bunch of dog shit ambushes, and it's gonna get old real fucking quick. But for now, for the first dungeon, I don't mind it, because it's teaching a player early on, be cautious, be slow, and that's a good lesson to teach a player early on. Later on though, it's just fucking annoying, so go fuck yourself. You get to the boss, and it's a dungeon exclusive boss, so that, that's pretty nice, this is not something you're gonna find anywhere else. Your reward for beating the dungeon is the Noble Sorcerer's Ashes, which tends to be a lot of people's first ash. So yeah, it's uh, pretty nice. Normally, I'd probably give this a 6.5 out of 10, but as a first dungeon, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I like this one. The Groveside Cave is located right here in Limgrave, and there really isn't too much to say about this one. It's really short, and the only real enemy of the dungeon are wolves. Kind of cool to see that nature and like wolves have a place in this world, but it, it is a bit boring. The boss is a recycled enemy from the very, very, very late game areas, which I uh, kind of don't mind really because, well, by the point you get to the end game, you might have forgotten that you killed this guy. Your reward for this dungeon is the Flame Drake Talisman. Not really that exciting, but I guess kind of useful. This dungeon is uh, not really that offensive, but it really hasn't got much going for it. There's no real reason you want to really go here. Probably a 4.5 out of 10. The Limgrave Tunnels are located right here in Limgrave. This dungeon will tend to be the player's first mine, and in this dungeon reviews, I'm going to be giving mines a higher score than usual because mines are so useful. You are definitely going to be wanting to hit up every single mine you see. They're that good, just for the upgrade materials. One thing worth mentioning is for the enemies here, when you attack them, your weapon bounces off. This implies to the player that you're meant to be using different weapons, like a crush weapon. I guess this is a pretty cool lesson to be teaching the player, like, oh, look, you have to learn to improvise if the situation doesn't work out you have to use a different approach different weapons that's a cool lesson to teach but the game doesn't really do much with it i can't really think of too many other enemies which demand that you use different combat styles or weapons it's cool but it doesn't really do much with it the boss is a recycled giant from outside but with a different weapon to what they have outside so it is it's slightly different your reward for this dungeon is the raw talisman it's very niche so get it if your build needs it if i had to give it a score on its own merits i'd probably give it like a 5 out of 10 but the fact that it gives you so many smithing stones so early on when starting off you'll always want to come here i'm going to give that a 7.5 just for that fact the Murk Water Cave is right here in Limgrave. First of all, I love the presentation here. It starts off with a very unique trap. I don't think this trap is anywhere else in the game. It's like a little bell trap, you go on it and all the people come after you. It really does feel like you're going into a thief cave. It is a very short dungeon and once you get to the boss room, you get the classic, you get patches. And you know what? Patches is such an iconic, maybe one of the most iconic, Dark Souls NPCs or enemies. It is a fun and unique fight because halfway through he gives up and, he, it's, and, and it's the classic Patches stuff. So fun to see. And your reward for this dungeon is Patches' shop. I like the dungeon itself because it's super unique with the thieves and the traps and Patches being here just elevates it. It's so iconic, so fun. Yeah, definitely. You're gonna want to come here just for how fun this encounter is first time. I kind of want to give it a 9 out of 10. 
The Earth Ball Cave is right here in Limgrave. This dungeon starts off with a pretty fucking epic troll. You fall through here and you fall in with a bunch of animals. And that's about it. There's just animals and like rats and shit everywhere. You get to the boss and unfortunately it is a repeat enemy of a very common enemy nearby this dungeon. It feels very lazy and unfortunately this bear in particular compared to the bears outside has twice as much health so you can go fuck yourself. Your reward for beating this dungeon is a spell drake talisman and yeah this is probably the first dungeon on this list that I really don't like. The only reason you want to come here is to see this funny glitch where you break out of the bears grab and that's the only reason I'd probably come here so that's fucking great. 3 out of 10. The Coastal Cave is right here in Limgrave. This dungeon uses goblins as its main enemies, which I do have a soft spot for, but it doesn't really do much with it. It's very linear, nothing too much to show. You get straight to the boss and it's just more goblins and two bigger goblins and that's your boss. Now, if I had to end it there, this would be a pretty poor, maybe another three out of 10. But the dungeon doesn't end there. After defeating the boss, the path continues, which I really like when dungeons do this. Once you get out of the dungeon, you appear on an island. And when investigating the island, you discover this church with the dragon spells and I absolutely love this. Any new player discovering this for the first time, they see this and they're like, oh man, this looks awesome. I really want to try some of these spells. I think that's so important in this game, setting up like little goals and little spells, little weapons, setting those up for the player wanting to use. It's so cool. So yeah, this dungeon, nothing really much to it, but the reward really elevates it. Maybe a six out of 10. The Tomb Sword Cave is right here in Limgrave. This is the first of dungeons to use Poison Swamp as its main gimmick. This, in my opinion, is bad. And that's not just because Poison Swamps are just dog shit anyway. When you have a dungeon, you really want to feel that you can take your time and explore, find all the items hidden away in little like secrets. When you get to a Poison Swamp, you never want to take your time. You always want to sprint past all the enemies, past all the items, everything. Not only is it really annoying, in my opinion, it's just not good design for what you want to get from a dungeon. You get to the boss and wow. Yeah, that is just a reused enemy from like the last area, not even this one, the last area. You know what, this is just dog shit and I, I would be giving this a 1 out of 10, but the reward is half okay. 2 out of 10. <laughs> the Impaler's Catacombs are right here in Limgrave. The Catacombs are always going to have a maze gimmick and this one's pretty fun. Eventually you get to a big square and it starts elevating and at the top it hits you with a spike trap so you, you gotta move. Eventually you figure out that if you send it up and then step off there's a hidden path below the trap. But as far as the rest goes it's a pretty standard catacomb. You get to the boss and oh dear oh fucking dear. That is the previous catacomb boss but all they did is copy and paste four extra goblins in there. Are you taking the fucking piss? Fuck you. Three out of ten because I like the spike trap. Otherwise, fuck you. The Tomb Sword Catacombs are right here in Limgrave. Like the previous one, it is a catacomb with a maze gimmick, this time round revolving around a pillar which you have to ride up. Other than that, it is very similar to the previous one, except for the fact it has a half decent boss. At least it's something new. Yeah, I know it's a reused enemy from later in the game. At least it's new for now. However, your reward for this dungeon is a I can't pronounce that fucking name, Loot Hell. The Headless, which a lot of people would put in their top three ashes in Elden Ring. This is a very, very nice reward for a very quick, very snappy and easy dungeon. And for that, it gets a seven out of 10. The Morn Tunnel is right here in Limgrave. I like how this one starts off. It's like a little beam that goes over the mine and you get to look down and see all the miners doing their work. But apart from that, it's a standard mine housing nine smithing stone ones and three somber smithing stone ones. The boss is just a slightly more powerful version of the enemies inside the mine, but your reward is a rusted anchor weapon. I don't know how many people use this weapon, but I think a lot of people saw this and said, yeah, that's gonna be a bit of fun. Like all mines on this list, if I had to give it its own merits, I'd probably give it like a five out out of 10 but because it's a mine and it's very useful on the smithing stones it gets a 6.5 out of 10. The Fringe Folk Hero's Grave is right here in Limgrave. It is worth mentioning that it costs two stone sword keys to get into this dungeon and when you first get in you're treated to a poison swamp just for one room and that's it it never comes back so it's clear they just wanted to poison you just for haha this game hard funny 
continue into the dungeon and you see this chariot. And this is the mechanic of this dungeon. If you touch it, you die. And that's about it. You just keep running and dodging the chariot. How fun this is, is purely subjective. But for me, it's absolutely dog shit. There is one slightly notable drop here and it is the Erdtree Favor Talisman. A pretty okay talisman for early on in the game. Get to the boss and it is a reused common boss from the overworld which is a very very overstated for this point in the game now i know i said i wasn't going to talk about the difficulty because it's purely subjective i feel i have to hear because this dungeon is the first dungeon the player sees as soon as they start the game so the player is want to gonna go here when they have two stone sword keys they're gonna be like oh yeah i'm gonna go back to that one i remember there's gotta be something good there and your reward for it is a mid-level boss and it is a mid-level boss because when you kill it you get 15k souls which is a lot that's a lot, that's mid game. Your reward if you beat this dungeon is a golden seed and the knight Oleg Ash. I really don't like this one. It's as I said before, this is the first dungeon the player sees when they start the game and it's a fucking trap. I have no problem with a mid game dungeon being in an early game area as an incentive to come back. But if you're gonna do that, don't make it the first dungeon the player sees and as a cost entry requirement. What a fucking joke. And while the reward's okay, I mean, the, the golden seed's nice, but the Knight Oleg, I mean, Headless Loot Hell, however you fucking pronounce that shit name, is probably better than this anyway. Fuck you. 1.5 out of 10, because it's a slap in the fucking face. The Death Touched Catacombs are right here in Limgrave. Like all catacombs, it is a puzzle maze, but this one uses skeletons as its main enemy, so I suppose that's quite nice. It is worth mentioning that this dungeon does have quite a few good drops, such as a fan favourite Uchi Katana right here. You get to the boss, and it is a new boss for this point in the game, but also I do like how it spawns in with like almost half health. Kind of tells a story with the boss's stats, which is really unique. Your reward is the Assassin's Crimson Dagger, a pretty good talisman, and also a chest with a death route if you care about quest lines i don't give a fuck so yeah this dungeon pretty short pretty sweet and it's got some pretty decent rewards i'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. <laughs> the murkwater catacombs are right here in limgrave and this dungeon might be the shortest dungeon in Elden ring you run straight ahead and the lever's right there you leave the room you turn left and there's the boss. You get to the boss and it's a gladiator fight, which is a new fight for this point in the game. You beat the boss and you get the banished knight Engval. I fucking can't pronounce that name. But hey, it's not bad. And you know what? I really like this one because if you just want a good quick fight out of nowhere for fun, you can just come here and get a fight in like 30 seconds. And for that, I like it. It gets a 7.5 out of 10. The High Road Cave is our last dungeon in Limgrave. Start off in like a normal wolf cave, nothing seems too out of the ordinary, but you find a little hole, and it's more than just a hole, you can see like architecture. It's not just a cave, you can tell that people have been here. You go further down, there's more signs of life, there's like little campsites, keep going further, and you open up into this massive water building. It's really, really cool, really presented well, and I really like interacting with this map. It's really fun just to jump about on the little bits of architecture that are still standing. Getting to the boss is really fun. It's the classic secret cave underneath a waterfall, and the only thing for me stopping this from being a 10 out of 10 is the boss, which unfortunately is a reused enemy from Limgrave, but also Again, I kind of almost don't mind it because it's presented well. In the boss room, you can look above. You can see the building where he's crashed through. He's like fallen into the cave. And your reward for this dungeon is the blue dancer's charm, which a lot of people will use. But yeah, man, this dungeon, I, I just really like it. I love how it's presented. It feels super unique. It really stands out. I want to give it a 9 out of 10. The Stillwater Cave is located right here in Lyernia of the Lakes. And this is another poison swamp cave, but I do prefer how it's done here. You enter on a little cliffside above the poison water, so you have a chance to avoid being poisoned here if you play well. Apart from that, nothing too much to show. You get to the boss and it's a clean, rotten knight. What is a really cool interaction here is that your reward for this dungeon is the winged sword and insignia. And what's really cool is that the boss gains the effect of this talisman. So it's almost as if the boss is using the talisman, which it then drops for the player. So yeah, it's a pretty fun fight, but poison swamps, they're, they're pretty shit. So I want to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Tom Scott, I am standing here in Cliff Bottom Catacombs. That's what I call my bubble. Anyway, by now you all know what to expect of a catacomb. It's the usual ambushes and traps. It's worth mentioning, there is a stone sword key reward here and it's a helmet. 
Uh, okay, sure, why the fuck not? Anyway, apart from that, this is a very long dungeon. I found myself just running around a lot of the time with nothing really happening. You do get to the boss, and it is a different version of the catacomb bosses. This time it uses magic, which adds like, what, like two extra attacks, so it's not really that different. And your reward is the kid and cell sword ashes, which is okay, but the problem is we've had many better ashes rewards in Limgrave, the previous area, so it kind of doesn't matter. It's not really a bad dungeon, but why bother? 4 out of 10. The Lakeside Crystal Cave is right here in the Urnia of the Lakes. This one's a really fun one to play. Start off at the top with like normal goblin enemies, but the idea of this dungeon is to keep working down and you keep climbing down and the further more down you get, the more crystallized and more deep you feel. It's a really cool feeling to see how far down you can go and how things change. And also when you get far down, you see these little rock slug snail things. They don't even fight back really, but it's just really fun to see like different enemies for like how deep the dungeon goes. You get down to the bottom and the boss jumps onto the player there's no boss door here and yeah it is a reused enemy but i kind of like how it's presented your reward is a cerulean amber medallion but the dungeon doesn't end there the path continues and you end up outside at this lovely looking area and also an npc which i believe is the start of the quest line i don't fucking know i hate quest lines overall this one's really cool i really like it i would give it a really high score but the dungeon doesn't really have too many good rewards. It's just kind of fun to go through and really unique. So for me, it gets an 8.5 out of 10. <laughs> the Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnels are right here in Leonia of the Lakes. Fucking hell, that's a mouthful. This is your mine to this area and it will include eight Smithing Stone 3s. It is your standard mine, but I do really like the texture swap of the miners here. They're all like magic imbued and I really love it. I really do. It's nice to see that these dumbass miners be like taught these magical spells to like make their jobs easier. It's a really kind of novel, really humble, but fun concept to see. I really do like it. You get to the boss and it is a crystalline, a reused enemy from later, but as I said, for now it's new. Your reward is the smithing stone miners bell bearing one. Arguably the most important one because if you're planning to have a bunch of weapons to keep trying out, you're definitely 100% gonna need this. That is unbelievably important. That alone elevates this so many points. It would be a 10 out of 10, but it is just a standard mine. So I have to give it a 9.5 out of 10. The roads and catacombs are right here in Leonia of the Lakes. And by now, you're starting to notice that the catacombs have a recurring theme. It's just a big maze with a lot of ambushes. And the more times I do these catacombs, the more that the dungeon needs to provide something new and unique to make it stand out. Unfortunately, this has nothing else going for it. It's really short. You get to the boss and there it is. That's the unique thing. It's a big, massive knight. And at first, you're going to fight him. You might kill him. And then nothing happens. And you're like, wait, hang on. What's going on? And he respawns, you're like, you motherfucker. You can kill him as many times as you like, and he will keep respawning until you figure out it's a little bitch ass snail that's reviving the boss constantly. You kill the snail as the true boss of the dungeon, and your reward is the glintstone sorcerer's ashes. We have much better ashes at this point, but really, if you are gonna hit up this dungeon, you're gonna go for the boss. I really wanna give this a three or a four, but it's worth it just for a fun boss. I'm just gonna give it a five out of 10. The Academy Crystal Cave is right here in the Urnia of the Lakes. It is worth mentioning that this dungeon requires two Stone Sword Keys to get into. And when you get in, it's a pretty nice one to look at actually. The crystals all over create like a nice dynamic. Also, I really like the buildings built into the rock face here. It looks pretty cool. Also worth mentioning is a pretty good mage staff here. Crystal staff requires 56 intelligence, so it's pretty end game. You get to the boss. And it's two crystallines this time. Oh boy, that's fucking fantastic. Your reward for this dungeon is Crystal Release, a pretty half-decent mage spell, but the dungeon doesn't end there, it continues. You go up this big elevator, and you end up in Raya Lucaria. Climb to the top, and you get, yes, another mage spell. This time you get the Terra Magica, and this one is arguably one of the best in the game. This one's hard to give a score because it's absolutely fantastic if you're a mage, otherwise there's no fucking point. If you're a mage, this one's probably gonna be an eight out of 10. If you're not a mage, well, fuck you, what's the point?
The Black Knife Catacombs are right here in Leonia of the Lakes, and this one starts with a stone sword key, and your reward is the Rosas Axe. It, it's all right, actually. It's got a cool weapon out. But apart from that, the catacomb is pretty much the same. The gimmick on this one is riding up the little like, guillotines. It's, it's actually kind of fun. Apart from that, yep, yeah, you're starting to realize the catacombs are all the fucking same. You get to the boss, and I don't need to say a fucking thing about this one. You know exactly what you're looking at. It's fucking dog shit. Your reward is the Twin Sage Sorceress Ashes. We have much better ones at this point in the game, so go fuck yourself. I would give this one a really low score, but I really like the guillotine neck mechanic and the weapon on the Stone Sword key. It's half decent. I'm going to give it a 5.5 out of 10. I'm starting to get real fucking sick of these catacombs, by the way. The ruin strewn precipice is right here in the area of the lakes and right out the gate, I want to say this is our first 10 out of 10. No questions and here's why. So to get to Altus Plateau, the next area, there are two main ways. Yeah, I know there's more ways to get in, but let's think of a new player who isn't a walking fucking Wikipedia. There's two ways in and that will be the Grand Lift or this dungeon. And what the game kind of implies is that the Grand Lift is a reward for players that explore. A bunch of castles and shit get rewarded with the key pieces and then they can go up to Altus Plateau in style. And this dungeon is meant to be a punishment. If you did not find all the Altus Plateau keys, your punishment is that you have to go through this dungeon to get up. But the thing is, this is amazing. This is way better than taking the lift in every regard. First up, the aesthetic on the dungeon itself. It's fantastic. You really feel like you're slowly climbing up this big rock face. You start out in the mine, and eventually you break up into the opening and you see this massive scale like, whoa, I started all the way down there. And you look up and you're like, oh shit, I've still got that way to go. And it's, it really puts it in perspective. It's really cool. The enemies really fit here. I love the inclusion of all enemies, the little gnome guys, and also the big winged bats. Secondly, this is also a mine. It, I mean, come on now. It is so useful to go here, irregardless of the rewards, just, just because it's a mine. You get climbing up the mountain, and eventually you get to the boss, and it's a big ass motherfucking dragon at the top of a mountain dungeon. Are you taking the Scooby Doo? It's fucking amazing. Yeah, I don't care if it's a duplicated boss or whatever. It totally fits. It really, really stands out. And this is why I want to give it a 10 out of 10. This is meant to be a punishment. If you don't have the Grand Lift key, your punishment is this dungeon. But you want to go here, even if you have the Grand Lift Key. You still want to do this, it doesn't matter. This is so useful, it's so fun. It is absolutely fantastic, it's spot on. Your reward for this dungeon is the Altus Plateau. I mean, come on now. Yeah, don't know what else to say. Warm it, Warm up. it up. That, that top, top note, note, that cream, that cream. Pure, vanilla. pure vanilla. That's a 10. <laughs> The Perfumer's Grotto is right here in the Altus Plateau. And this dungeon, I kind of think it's meant to be telling a story. You get into the dungeon and the Perfumers, which are a common enemy from outside, kind of extracting their poisons from the plants. So I guess that's a pretty cool way to get involved with that. But apart from the kind of story it's meant to be telling, not really much else to show. It's quite standard. I suppose you've got one of these big fuckers, which I hate, really. I don't know why like an Eldritch God is knocking about in the Perfumer's Grotto, but fucking whatever. You get to the boss, uh, and uh, I can't be fucking arsed really. Your reward is the great Urban Killer Cleaver, a pretty decent weapon. So yeah, I guess if you want a bit of story and you want a cool strength weapon, I guess you can come here for this. The dungeon's not fantastic, but it's not really that bad, honestly. I'll give it a 6 out of 10. The Sage's Cave is right here in the Altus Plateau and this dungeon also has a pretty cool story. It's the home of a necromancer and it's pretty cool they've set up all these defences like the skeletons being the main enemy and also these invisible walls that are trying to hide themselves and such. And behind the walls he's just got like normal ass shit like robes and stuff, like, you know stuff he'd wear. So yeah, kind of breaking into this guy's house and just taking his shit. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool honestly. The dungeon has two bosses. Firstly, the Necromancer. It's a pretty standard humanoid enemy. Not really much to say. Your reward is a magic scaling flail, so that's there if you want that. But the other boss is another Black Knife Assassin. However, this one you can't see unless you bring a torch. But not any torch, a specific torch. And I guess if you like this or not, it's purely opinionated. But for me, I'm under the firm belief that if you walk into a dungeon, you should at least have a chance 
of being able to do it. And you're just inherently at a disadvantage for something you didn't know any better of, so it's a, it just feels a bit cheap to me. Your reward for killing the Black Knife Assassin is a Concealing Veiled Talisman. It's pretty whatever. So, apart from this boss, I actually really do like this dungeon. I like how it's just pretty much breaking this guy's home and kicking him up the balls. Great. 7 out of 10. The unsightly catacombs are right here in the Altus Plateau. It is worth mentioning that this dungeon requires one stone sword key to get into. And is it worth it? Fuck off. It's a very standard catacomb. Very short, very sweet. You get to the boss and I want to put a fucking bullet in my head. Your reward for beating this dungeon is a perfumer's ash. This one's okay, but we still probably have better ones by now. But if you want to spend a stone sword key on this ash, feel free. Otherwise, go fuck yourself. The Altus Tunnels are right here in the Altus Plateau. This is a mine, so of course, from me, it gets bonus points. This one's giving you Smithing Stone 5s, but also, at this point, you can start to realise they're all the same, really. Apart from some visual tweaks, what I do like, like this one, for example, I love seeing the Erd Tree's roots, that you're getting closer to the capital, so you're starting to see the influence of the Erd Tree. So I, I like that detail. Apart from that, yeah, it's just your standard mine. Is worth mentioning, though. Has got a pretty good charm for some characters, the Arsenal charm, so that's pretty nice. Yeah to the boss and literally I'm gonna be sick in my fucking mouth. Your reward is a somber smithing bell. This is still really good but the problem kind of is you can buy the same somber stone that you unlock from EG the blacksmith so you, you kind of don't need this. Still it is really useful. You still really want to come here but at this point it's starting to feel a bit samey. I, I'm gonna give it a 6.5 out of 10. Some up the dungeons, isn't it? Do I, do I have to go into the dungeon? Can we just end it right now and call it a 1 out of 10? Can we just call it a 1 out of 10 already, man? Do we have to go through the dungeon? The Sainted Hero's Grave is right here in the Altus Plateau, and this one starts with a stone sword key for one of my favourite items in the game, the Crimson Sea Talisman, which gives you more health per Estus. Yeah, I still call it Estus. Who the fuck calls it a healing potion? Do one. It's fantastic in my opinion, so you could just come here for that. But if you decide to do the rest of the dungeon, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty unique, I guess. You've got these blackened out enemies here, which are invincible, but then you take them to a light circle, you can then start damaging them. So I guess that's kind of unique. It's a pretty fun concept for the first time round. I have a feeling this is going to be repeated another five fucking times later, but for now, it, I guess it's pretty fun. You get to the boss, and it is a recycled enemy from much later in the game, but again, for now, at least it's new. Your reward is Ancient Dragon Knight Kristoff. This is a pretty good ash. I can't say there's anything in here that's too offensive. It was all just kind of cool. I'm going to give that a 7.5 out of 10. <laughs> The old Altus Tunnel is right here in the Altus Plateau. It is worth mentioning that this one requires two Stone Sword Keys for entry. And what do you get? A slap in the fucking face. Now make no mistake, this is still a mine. You are still getting Smithing Stone 5s from this. But the problem is, you get less items and less Smithing Stones from this tunnel than the free version. The paid two Stone Sword Key version has less stuff than the free mine. Like. What's the fucking point? You could go here if you really need the last bits of Smith and Stone 5s. But you may as well get those anywhere else for free. The boss is a recycled fucking giant. I can't be fucking arsed. Your reward is a great club. What a slap in the fucking face. I know it's a mine, but it still gets a shit score because it's an insult, really. 2 out of 10. The Windham Catacombs are right here in the Altus Plateau. And at this point, I'm not going to mention a fucking thing about the catacombs because at this point, they're all the same. A bunch of previous concepts just get repeated here. Like, for example, the spike floor trap that I really liked, it just brings it back. So I can't really say much. A good reason for going here, however, is the Stone Sword Key Door, which will give you a Lightning Scorpion Charm, pretty fantastic talisman for any sort of lightning damage user. Get to the boss, and it's the standard Catacomb boss, but imbued with lightning. As far as repeats go, I think I'd kind of prefer this over a copy and paste. However, your reward is the Glove Warp Picker's Bell Bearing One. That's right, one. What the actual shag is going on? This would have been a half decent reward, like back in fucking Limgrave. But no, I'm physically sat halfway up Mount fucking Gelmir, and it has the audacity to give me Glove Wart 1s. 
What the actual shag is going on? Fuck you, two out of ten again, dickhead. The Gelmir's Hero Grave is right here in Mount Gelmir. And as soon as you enter, I'm sure you're gonna have a massive fucking smile on your face. Have you seen this? It's the chariot gimmick plus lava, but the lava is weird. It doesn't really damage you. It just slows you down, which is fucking weird. But also, they want you to go through the lava. And that's because there's a bunch of items hidden at the end of these big lava paths. Namely, the big finger weapon here, which I'm sure a lot of people would go to this dungeon just for this, because it's a bit of a meme. But this whole chariot and lava mechanic is absolutely dog shit on so many levels, which I'm not even going to get into. For now, I'm just going to say I want to fucking kill myself. You get to the boss. And yeah, I'm gonna kill myself. It's a reused story boss this time. Are you actually taking the Scooby fucking do? I cannot be fucked. What is this? Your reward is a Bloodhound Knight as a summon. Pretty cool, but the other ones we got are better. What's the reason you're gonna come here? To get the finger weapon. Probably that. Probably that's it. To get the Mimi haha <laughs> funny finger weapon, right? You get it, and you wanna leave. There's no point finishing it. When the best thing about your dungeon is picking up an item and leaving instantly. It's a bit shit, isn't it? Two out of 10, go fuck yourself. The Volcano Cave is right here in Mount Gelmir. This one is a super short dungeon revolving around goblins. Nice and simple, nothing too much to show, but yeah, just nice simple goblin fights. You get to the boss and it's a retextured version of a very rare goblin boss so this could well be your first time fighting this your reward for this dungeon is the jar cannon oh yeah baby this is exactly what we needed what we got here is a short snappy little fun dungeon quick boss get out jar cannon fucking love it eight out of ten The Seathwater Cave is right here in Mount Gelmir. It is worth mentioning that this dungeon requires two Stone Sword Keys to get into. And is it worth it? You can go fuck yourself. That is an unavoidable poison swamp. There is no way around that. You have to get poisoned here. That's it. And apart from that, yeah, it's just a standard copy and paste poison cave. One thing that is worth mentioning is that the Mushroom Armor Set is here. A fan favorite because it's pretty goofy. Apart from that, Go fuck yourself. You get to the boss, and I'm going to put a fucking bullet in my head. That is two reused enemies from a previous mine. Are you fucking serious? Your reward is a shitty charm that gives you more damage when someone's poisoned. What the actual shag is going on? You know, you know what? Fuck it. I was thinking, what would it take to be a 1 out of 10? Because there's little redeemable bits in every dungeon. People were like, oh, but the funny mushroom set. Go fuck off. No, probably be a 2 out of 10. But it's two stone sword keys to get into here, to get fuck all. Nah, that's it. One out of ten. There you go. Fuck off. <laughs> the seal tunnel is right here in the Altus Plateau. This is another mine that gives you smithing stone fives, but also very early on in a chest is the second smithing stone bell bearing, giving you infinite amounts of threes and fours. You don't even need to kill a boss for it. You just come in and get it. That is fantastic. I know I mentioned this before, but I really like in the caves, seeing the Erd tree roots. It really gives you a cool feeling of the Erd tree's influence getting into the parts of the land now. It's, it's really awesome to see. Apart from that, it's your standard mine. You get to the boss and it's a very rare boss. Only two of them exist in the game. So it may as well be a completely unique experience. Your reward for killing the boss is the Onyx Lord Greatsword. Super cool, super nice weapon. And the dungeon doesn't end there, it continues just a little bit. You go outside and you get a lovely shot of the scenery and a tower for you to come back later to. Yeah, that is absolutely spot on. That's one of the best ones so far. For me, the only thing stopping this from being a 10 out of 10 is by now, there's a lot of reused assets, a lot of reused enemies, etc. So I can't give it a 10. But based on how useful all the items and such here is, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. The Orisa side tomb is right here in the Altus Plateau. This is a catacomb and it starts off with some jar enemies, which, which is really unique. And these are really fun enemies. I like how they kind of explode on you. All catacombs have kind of a little maze gimmick. 
and this one is really cool. This is a repeating dungeon, meaning that you go to a teleporter, and then it looks like you've been teleported back to the start of the dungeon. And it turns out there's little subtle differences every time that guide you towards the true solution, which is super cool. I really do like this. It's really unique. And it's really memorable too. You get to the boss, and it's a repeat of the duelist, but this time it got copy and pasted like five jars in the room. Fan fucking tastic. However, your reward are the Soul Jars of Fortune Ashes. This is a really, really fun ash. I'm assuming a lot of people would love this. So as far as catacombs go, this one really stands out really nice. I'm going to give that a 7.5 out of 10. The Orisa's Hero Grave is right here in the Altus Plateau. And at this point, when you hear Hero's Grave, you may as well think, well, fuck me. But I'm gonna say, this one is actually pretty good. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. It starts shit, fair enough. It starts again with the chariots and you just have to wait for them. But after that, it starts getting good. You see, they do the chariot thing again, but make the track wider. That to me is exactly how it always should have been done because now the intention's still there like oh you have to dodge these things but now you don't have to play a fucking red light green light with it you can, you can go whenever you like and if you're smart you can still dodge both of them and after this part if you're sick of the chariots which 90% of players at this point want to blow their fucking brains out you look below and you have like little wooden rafters and you can take these to avoid the next chariot section really like that that to me is how the chariot section always should have been done yep sure if you want make the player aware that this chariot's gonna fucking kill you if you touch it but also, it's providing more than just playing red light, fucking green light with it. You can find little secret passages around it, or if you're skillful enough, you can just dodge it by running really quick. You get to the boss, and we were this fucking close to having a hero's grave that's actually good. That is two knights, copy and pasted, in the same room. Go fuck yourself. It is worth mentioning too, this is a really challenging fight for this point in the game. A lot of players have to come back to do this. However, if you tough it out, your reward is a full armor set and a really cool weapon so yeah if you can tough it out that's a really good reward you know what the, the boss lets it down but this could be the first and probably the only good hero's grave it does the chariots but it does it well in my opinion man i can't believe i'm doing this but i'm giving the hero graves an 8 out of 10 for, no for, okay no 7 out 7.5 out of 10 The Landale Catacombs are really hard to find, so I'm going to show you where it is. From the bonfire, just run out here. Yeah, fuck it, I still call it bonfires. You find this little drop of a ladder, just jump down. You're going to get to a room with a bunch of pipes and rafters, and you're going to follow this bit here, but look down on the left. There should be a little place to jump down. It looks like you're going to fall to your death, but you just about survive. Bosh, jump down there, go across, go ahead and turn left, and there should be a lobster ahead, but run past him and the catacombies are right here. It's a lot of fucking about for a catacomb, and is it worth it? Go fuck yourself. The catacomb is just a copy and paste of the previous catacomb with the looping mechanic. Except they did it shit. In the previous catacomb, the loop was like two minutes. You run through two minutes and you get to another loop. But this time, the loop is ten minutes. So going around this loop doesn't feel like, oh, whoa, where am I? It feels like I want to put a fucking bullet in my head. You get to the boss and I guess that's unique. I mean, it's just a humanoid with a weapon. But that's unique. I bet a lot of people didn't even knew this guy existed. Your reward is the Lord of of blood's exaltation talisman it's pretty niche i mean you can use it if you want but it's a bit shit overall this dungeon is a lot of fucking around to get to and when you get there the fucking around just keeps happening what a pain 2.5 out of 10 The Jail Cave is right here in Caelid. It is worth mentioning that this dungeon requires two Stone Sword Keys for entry. And when the dungeon requires Stone Sword Keys to get in, it has to be put under a lot more scrutiny because it better be fucking worth it. However, this dungeon is perhaps the first dungeon where the Stone Sword Keys are totally worth it. This is a fantastic dungeon. First of all, I love this aesthetic, the underground mines, but it's not just a usual mine tile set. Stone and wood are a lot more like burn a lot more like crimson it's a simple palette swap but i like it a lot secondly i like how the general like gameplay of the dungeon is first of all you go through and all the enemies are behind these little jail cells and to progress in the dungeon you have to pull a switch and open all the jail cell doors and let all the enemies out so it's kind of like a little mini prison break it's, it's pretty fun to see and you know what makes it even fucking better you can get stone sword keys 
in the Stone Sword Key Dungeon. Yeah, so if you explore a Stone Sword Key Dungeon, you get a return on your investment. I fucking love that. You get to the boss, and it is another duelist, but this time he's got a bit of a palette swap. Your reward is the putrid corpse ashes. They're okay, but there's better ones by now. But the dungeon doesn't end there, it continues. And all it does is open into a nice scenic shot with a weapon. And I love that, it's so simple. As I said before, when a dungeon requires stone sword keys to get into, the scrutiny is a lot higher. But it also means if the dungeon is really good, you feel rewarded for those stone sword keys you saved up being used for something really cool. Yeah, I like this one a lot. It gets a 10 out of 10 from the Len. <laughs> the jail tunnel is right here in Caelid. This is another mine and I'm running out of things to say about mines. So yeah, I'll just tell you it has seven smithing stone fours and that'll be good enough for you. What actually, fuck you. One thing I want to say, this dungeon has my favorite weapon in Elden Ring, the Cross Nagata. So for me, fuck you, that gets a point. You get to the boss and it's another one of these magma worms. And I don't mind it because I kind of don't mind reusing rarer bosses. That, that's fine for me. Your reward for killing this is the Moonville Katana. And the thing is, I know a lot of people are going to say that's a bad thing. If you want to admit it or not, it it's probably one of the most iconic and well-recognized weapons in Elden Ring, and I, and I feel that's a good thing. It's, it's a fun weapon for the newcomers. Don't don't be don't be a dick about it. It's a good mine, but it's all just a bit samey by now. Seven point five out of ten. The minor Earth Tree catacombs are right here in Kale, and this is what I was fearing the most: the moment where the catacombs were inevitably gonna run out of fucking ideas. Gameplay-wise, this is no different from the very first one. It's just the imp enemies around corridors. That's it. Every catacomb has a maze gimmick, and this one, you send up an elevator and walk underneath. Fucking fantastic gameplay. You get to the boss, and I have absolutely nothing to say. Your reward is the mad pumpkin ashes. Are you fucking serious? We had better ones in fucking Limgrave. What the actual shag is going on? There's, there's no point unless you're getting fucking globe warp fours to sixes. No. 1.5 out of 10. The Celia Crystal Tunnel is right here in Caelid. This is another mine, but it's not really the purpose of this dungeon. I'm sure many of you are aware, but this dungeon is a beginner's trap. There is a chest in one of the first areas of the game which teleport you halfway into this dungeon. So it's hard to give it a score because, it, yeah, it's a dungeon, but it's also kind of its purpose for existing is meant to be a trap. It's very clear that it's meant to feel overleveled for the player. The enemies one-shot you, you get smithing stone fives which are nowhere near relevant to your character's level at the point. If you find this fun or not, it's purely subjective, but for me, you can go fuck yourself, what's the point? But as a dungeon itself, there's nothing here which we haven't seen previously. The magic miners are here, but also some bug enemies which are reused as a boss in another fucking dungeon, so it's, it's a right mess. You get to the boss, and it's a rare reused boss from the overworld. Again, it's meant to be further proving that this is overleveled for the player because your reward a smithing stone sevens, which is perhaps very, very overleveled for what you are right now. And it's very hard to give this a score because on one hand, it's a dungeon. On another hand, it really only exists to be a trap. I can't give it a score, so I just, I'm just going to give it a five and fuck off. The Abandoned Cave is right here in Caelid. And I don't know how, but they did it. They made Poison Swamps better. They made it a Scarlet Rot Swamp. Fan fucking tastic. I want to kill myself. And I don't need to say much more than that. Apart from, I do like the aesthetic of this dungeon. There seems to be a bunch of these Iron Maidens kind of machinery stuck down here. So it's a kind of cool little aesthetic where all oh, the machineries come down here, but the wildlife and the plants are fighting back and taking them over. So I, I like that angle, but it's a shame that the dungeon itself is really fucking shit to play. You get to the boss, and I swear we've had this one before. It is a clean rock night. Your reward? is duplicating the duplicated boss. I fucking love this dungeon. It is fantastic. It is the best one yet. However, your real reward is a golden scarab, a really, really good talisman. So it is all worth it for the talisman in the end, but it's a fucking pain. Four out of 10. The Dragon Barrow Cave is right here in Caelid. The dungeon starts with a bear, and I swear to Christ, it has more health than King Morgoth. There is no reason to kill this bear. It's just a big R slash chonker. If you do kill it, you get fuck all. This dungeon is extremely short. It's about 30 seconds. You get to the boss, and my fucking Christ, I'm going to throw up in my fucking mouth. On top of this being two reused enemies just slapped together in the same room, the bear outside was harder than this. 
What the fucking hell is going on? Your reward is a Flandrick Talisman plus two. I mean, it's good, but it's incredibly niche. There is no reason to come here apart from a talisman that you'll use maybe like twice. What a piece of shit. Two out of ten. <laughs> The Salia Hideaway is right here in Caelid. I am going to show you though because it's hidden behind a pretty big illusionary wall. A lot of people will miss this. And are you missing out on much? Fuck no. To be fair though, one thing I really do like is the Crystal Cave. Again, I know we talked about this before, but I love how it looks. I love running across the crystals to get further and further deeper into the cave. The problem is though, it doesn't do much with it. There's the two or three same enemies just over and over and over again. And the crystals, even though they're really cool, there's just a fucking lot of them, and that's it. You get to the boss, and now I'm beginning to realise why this dungeon was so hidden away. It's absolute dog shit. Your reward is Crystal Torrent, a really strong magic spell if you have the FP for it. Even though the boss is shit, the dungeon's pretty nice to look at. But overall, the dungeon's just not good. And it's also not bad. Just 5 out of 10. The Kaelid Catacombs are right here in Kaelid, and I have nothing to say about this one. Not because it's bad, it's because it's very, very short. It's only about two minutes. It's your standard enemies, all the things you've seen before, and the only items you can pick up are glove warts, so it's fucking nothing. But hey, if it has a cool boss, that's like a quick snappy two minute boss, that's, that's fun. You get to the boss, and you can go fuck yourself. Your reward is the Kindred of Rot Ashes. I didn't know there was two different kinds of these. I swear we got one before. What's, what's the fucking point? The thing is though, it's like a two minute dungeon, so it, it's not bad, but it's not even worth doing for two minutes. So I don't know what to give it, like maybe a four out of ten? The War Dead Catacombs are right here in Caelid. It is worth mentioning that this location is inside the boss room, which I think is really cool. You would never expect a dungeon to be in a boss room. It starts off really strong. It starts with Melania's soldiers versus the Darn soldiers in a never ending war. Really cool bit of story told through some gameplay here. And apart from that, again, this catacomb is very short compared to the others. So hey, great aesthetic, nice and snappy. If it has a good boss, we're on to something. You get to the boss, and I seriously cannot be fucking bothered. You, you know, before starting this list, I didn't think this game had too many duplicated bosses. And every time I see one, I want to be sick in my fucking mouth. Your reward is a golden seed and the red main knight Ogre. I mean, it's a pretty good ash and a golden seed is a great reward. A really cool dungeon, but the boss lets it down. Nonetheless, I think it's alright. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. The Spirit Caller Cave is right here in the mountaintops of the Giants. It is worth mentioning that this dungeon requires two Stone Sword Keys for entry. First of all, the aesthetic of the dungeon is really cool. I really like the magically imbued nature element of like all the water being like, glowing and all these fantastic creatures living here. It's really cool. And on top of that, it's a really short dungeon. It's about two minutes. So like always, if it's a short snappy dungeon with a good boss, it's worth your time. You get to the boss. No. Your reward for killing the Godskin Apostle is a Godskin Noble. What the actual shag is going on? Your reward for killing the Godskin Noble is a little bitch ass motherfucking snail. You kill a snail as the true final boss of the dungeon. And your reward is the Godskin Swaddlecloth Talisman and the Black Flame Ritual Spell. I mean, if you really want these items, go ahead. But for a dungeon requiring two Stone Sword Keys for entry, what you get is just a shit version of the Godskin Duo. Three out of 10. The giant conquering hero's grave is right here in the mountaintops of the giants. This is a pretty long dungeon based around the light and dark mechanic of the enemies, except it does it quite shit here. I, I didn't mind the whole like, light and dark mechanic on, on smaller enemies, but what it does in this dungeon is make it all mini bosses. And that just goes against the entire point of it because if you see a darkened out enemy and it's a smaller enemy, that you're like, okay, maybe it's worth my time to make them vulnerable and then I can take them out quickly. But here, they're all mini bosses, so you can't take them out quickly. So what's the point in wanting to make them vulnerable? It just incentivizes you to run past everything. And that's boring. You get to the boss, and I am actually fucking depressed looking at this. That is not only a recycled common enemy, it's a common enemy from outside the dungeon. You can walk like 30 seconds outside the dungeon and find one of these. And now one of those is the boss of this dungeon. I physically cannot be fucking arsed. However, your reward is his sword and his full armor set. So it's a really cool reward, but it's a really boring dungeon. I would give this one like a two or maybe even a one 
but the reward's really cool. So I'm going to give that a 3 out of 10. The Giants Mountaintop Catacombs are right here in the mountaintops of the Giants. And this catacomb, I believe, is meant to be like the ultimate catacomb. It's absolutely massive. And what does it do with it? The same old shit as always. This reuses elements from almost every previous catacomb and mashes them into one. So you've got the usual gang squads, you've got the usual like secret paths under elevators, etc, etc. I have nothing in particular to say about it because I've said all the things previously. This is quite literally all of the previous concepts from the previous catacombs all mashed into one. And I suppose it is like pretty cool to see like an ultimate catacomb with all the previous features, but also it feels like such an ugly amalgamation of random concepts thrown into each other. But you know what, for the ultimate final catacomb, it kind of suits that. As long as we've got a cool ass boss, you know what, fuck it, I like it for that honestly. You get to the boss and why, or fucking Jesus, why? We had potential here boys, we had fucking potential to have the ultimate catacomb. But no, and your reward for this dungeon, well, rather than me saying it, I feel like my live recording puts into words much better what this reward is, and I'm really sorry about the bad mic quality. Oh, what the fuck's this? Glove Wart Bell Bearing 2! 2! If I wanted fucking Glove Wart 4, I'd go to write a fucking Lucaria! In all seriousness, I was prepared to give this like a 4 or a 5, but after this reward, that's a 20 minute or a half an hour dungeon for that. For the ultimate slap in the fucking face, I'm going to give that a 1 out of 10. The Consecrated Snowfield Catacombs are right here in the Consecrated Snowfield. Even though we had our last Ultimate Catacomb, this is the last catacomb, thank the fucking Lord, we are covering. And as I said before, there's nothing really I can show what you haven't already seen. It's the gang squads, it's the little levers, it's the little secret paths. I I'm, I'm running out of ways to say this is dog shit. But you know what, as this is the last catacomb, I have to say, some people might like the maze and the traps and the ambushes. Some people like that, it's purely subjective, but for me, you can go fuck yourself. Get to the boss, and it is a retexture of the duelist once again. I just want to get this over with so I never have to talk about a catacomb again. Your reward is a pretty nice bit of fashion. I, I don't even half mind that cloak. But yeah, you'd come here for the cloak, and otherwise there's no fucking reason, as per usual. Five out of ten. I am finished talking about the catacombs. I have never been more happy in my entire life. The Cave of the Forlorn is right here in the Consecrated Snowfield. It is worth mentioning that this one requires two Stone Sword Keys for entry. When you enter, it opens up with a really cool bit of decor. It opens up with a dead dragon. And I don't think we've had a dungeon, but it has a dead dragon inside it, so it's, it's really cool. This cave is an ice cave, and it does it really well. Not only do I like how you're jumping across all these mounds of ice and snow, but also the floor is made of ice. And if you look carefully, you can see it through the ice, and you can see all the parts of the dungeon you're going to go to. And that's a really cool detail. I really like that. The dungeon is pretty short and it is just full of like common enemies, but I really like the snow aesthetic here. It's really well done. You get to the boss and it's a reused side quest boss with a different sword. But with the sword, it adds a bunch of different stuff. He has like two new attacks and a faster moveset in general. So as far as boss retextures go, it's one of the better ones. Your reward is the sword that the creature's holding, the Golden Order Great Sword. It's a really, really cool weapon. Yeah, that's a nice one. It's an awesome dungeon with a really good reward. 8.5 out of 10. The Yerlau Annex Tunnel is our last dungeon and it is right here in the Consecrated Snowfield. This is a mine and I really like the aesthetic here. I love how the frost has kind of taken over and all of the miners' equipment like the lift shafts, they've all frozen over so they can't get out. It's a really cool kind of little concept. This dungeon's perfect if you want to round off your smithing stones. It gives eight, eight smithing stones and also the ancient dragon smithing stone, the final one. So yeah, you can come here for that. But apart from that, nothing else too much to say what we haven't said before about the mines. Get to the boss, and this is a reuse remembrance boss. So it's a pretty big boss in the main game. And when this game reuses bosses, I don't really mind too much. But reusing one of the main bosses and giving it a crazy extra amount of health and damage, 
It, it just feels weird here for some reason for me. Your reward is the Meteorite of Astel, a really powerful mage spell. So if you want that, you can do the boss. But if you're not interested in that, you don't want to do this boss. It's a really tanky, really heavy damage boss for a mage spell. But hey, if you want to come here just for the smithing stones and then leaving, that's totally worth it. I would give this one a higher score, but a lot of people are going to come here and not do the boss and leave. So that really hurts the score. 7 out of 10. And that's it. As far as I'm aware, that is every dungeon. I'm really sorry if I missed one. This list has been so long and I can imagine myself maybe accidentally forgetting to put in one or two recordings, you know, so I'm really sorry if I missed one. And yeah, out of the 52 dungeons, I have to say I probably only liked maybe about 10 of them. But the point of this whole video was for you guys to see all these dungeons and maybe go, wow, I I've never seen that one before. I, I kind of want to go there. So if you saw a dungeon here that you've never seen before, I'm glad that i kind of shown you something new about this game and maybe you'll go there so that would be really cool also if you've watched this far thanks for watching the full video i really appreciate that i know every youtuber says this but i really would like for you guys to put your opinions or whatever you want to add in the comments i really do read every single one and i like replying to a bunch as well so if you guys have anything you want to add please do let me know in the comments but yeah that about does it thank you all so much for watching this one the next video is going to be a bunch of really fun ones i'm really looking forward to them now catch you then me little fucking egg in the buns